People have claimed to see all kinds of paranormal activity. There's a huge, big, black, prehistoric-looking bird that's been spotted. A black dog with red eyes of fire. Big, huge, black snake. Big and black around as a stovepipe, which has been seen. But the most famous creature sighting is Bigfoot. Hawkamont means place where spirits dwell. It is the most dangerous and mysterious place in the whole Bridgewater Triangle. It has been cursed by Native American Indians because the white men stole their land and mistreated their people. That is what a chief has told me. Okay, uh, my name is Joseph M. DeAndre, and um, I used to be a private investigator and a photographer and you know, worked in factories and stuff before then, warehouses, done all kinds of jobs. As far as the Bridgewater Triangle is concerned, that has been one of my most interesting investiga investigations. I find it fascinating. I learned about it in the Boston Magazine many years ago. Uh, this is my drawing. I drew of the uh, Bigfoot creature that I saw in that wooded area called Claybanks II in the winter of 1978. It was about, I'd say, 200 feet across from the pond at the most. Uh, and uh, I'm not an artist, but I did the best I could, and this is exactly what it looked like. And um, I, it was very big. I never saw anything like it before. And um, I became a believer after that. I considered the possibility maybe somebody walking around in a monkey suit, but it didn't look like any kind of um, jacket or anything. And it walked very slowly. It was not a normal walk. Kind of like a, maybe, a, I don't know if I should use the word Frankenstein, but I've not I've used it before. But extremely strange, slow walk, like it was walking down a hill. Oh, I forgot to mention that. I wanted to see what kind of terrain that it was walking on. I said to myself, if there's no hill, if there's nothing going down, then I must have imagined it. So I went over there to check out the terrain. Sure enough, the terrain verified it. It, it, it was some like a path going down. So it walk, was walking down that, maybe not so much a path. Well, the path is on the right side, but there's like, um, it's a low area of ground. So it was walking there. So I'm gonna, I'm just, I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. So it's just great. People got, some people are gonna think I'm crazy. Oh, you saw Bigfoot. Oh, another one of those guys that see Bigfoot. Yeah, right. Oh, well, did you take a picture of him? Well, I was in photography school at the time. I didn't have my Magimatic camera with me. It's a cheap camera. I didn't think I was going to see nothing. I really didn't take it seriously. Well, this guy... Uh, named Jim Rice. He mailed me more info than anyone else and uh, told me what happened to him and his two um, friends that were over there. They brought a tent just to hang around. They didn't camp or anything. Well, they said when they got there with the tent, he told me in the, in the letter he wrote that something threw a big log at them. They dropped the tent and ran. Okay. The next day, they went to get their tent back. And they said all three of them had a heck of a time just lifting that log. Something, somebody didn't want them there. And threw that thing right at him. He said, boy, and whatever it was, it threw it at him, you know, and it almost hit them. And, and that, I mean, so what it was, who it was, who knows? <laughs> whatever it was, uh, it was very strong. This half Indian guy used to tell me about it. And he called it Sasquatch. And he said that him and his uncle used to go to the wooded area where I saw the creature. And he told me, he said that his uncle shot what they thought was a bear. But after he shot it, he said it gave out a half animal, half human cry of pain. I said, well, you know, did you see it? He goes, well, you know, we saw it look like a bear. Okay, they went to the spot, and then they found some 
he said, long dark brown hair and blood on some leaves. I mean, this guy Wayne and this new man named Mike, he's uh, like a good, good camper. And he taught me how to camp. We went to the same area. We went to the, the other opening as you walk up. That was a dirt road. Now it's like a path. And there's another opening and um, get a little campfire going. Mike and Wayne went into the woods to get firewood. Mike brought his 22 semi-automatic rifle. I had my machete with me. And so I went into the woods little by little. Now, um, as I walked into the woods, put the sticks in my left hand, picking up the sticks, and I got, I must have been maybe, I would say, I don't know, between 20 and 30 feet into the, you know, into the woods. And all of a sudden, here I go. <sighs> like that, loud, but like, a, I don't know, like something from hell. I mean, much worse than that. Like it wanted to tear me apart. I don't scare easy, but I, I, I love what I do out there. I'm not afraid. I got faith in God, and I'm, I'm just not afraid. But that day, that time, I, I was very afraid. And I was like, that thing, the sound, whatever. It was close, too. And it was watching us. You know, we didn't know. I had gotten too close. It didn't want me there. So I pulled my machete. I said, better than nothing. <laughs> and I put the last stick in my hand, and I walked that in. And I heard Mike say, what the hell was that? And we, we all heard it. I says, well, have you ever heard anything like it before? He goes, I've been camping since I was a little boy with my father in the woods. Never heard nothing like that. Bobcat, perhaps? No. Bear? You know? It was horrible. I believe, or without a shadow of a doubt, uh, based on the people I've talked to, the information I've read about this Bridgewater Triangle, um, and the people that have claimed to see it, um, that it really does exist, and therefore must, there must be more than one. I find it hard to believe it could live in a small area like that, but yet that's where I saw it, and uh, where that man shot what he thought was a bear. Evidently, he must have injured it. That there must be more than one. Where it lives is a good question, because I, after all my foot patrols and expeditions and stuff, I've never found any place that I, that's big enough that one could say, well, it, maybe it's here, you know, probably lives, you know, on the ground somewhere. I now believe it. I'd like to see it one more time if possible.